Hello and good morning, it's Phil Thatch and once again I'm in my backyard blind and I'm using my favorite camera which is the Canon R7 but today I've got something a little different on it. Today I'm using the super budget, super cheap, super light, super small RF 100 to 400. This is an f5.6 to f8 aperture on the zoom and I think it's going to work pretty good. I, I don't usually need the uh, 400 to 500 part of my 100 to 500 when I'm out here and it uh, sh I think shooting at um, I'll probably be at 7.1 and f8 most of the time uh, depending on where I am in the zoom range and I think that'll be enough light it was supposed to be a lot more cloudy than this but here I am at sunrise and there as you may be able to see shining on the blind there there's lots of golden hour light this morning so just got to get the birds to come up and get them in the frame. This is a bonus section and this is with the 100 to 500. I promise the rest of the photos in the video will be with the 100 to 400 as advertised. But the day before I was looking out the kitchen while I was getting ready for work and I saw this bird and I didn't know what it was. I had never photographed one before. So I ran and got the camera, made this shot. And then I looked it up and found out that this is a European starling just a juvenile version, which I had never seen before. The first bird I saw this morning was a mockingbird, and that was really before the golden hour light started. Here is the mockingbird photo, and even at 300 millimeters f8, that pole behind it is not very far behind it, and it's pretty well bokehified, so I'm pretty happy with that on this inexpensive lens. And here up on my high perch is a female brown-headed cowbird, and next up is a downy woodpecker and look how long that beak is it almost looks like a hairy woodpecker but it's too small to be a hairy woodpecker and look at all that suet i saw all that suet and wasn't sure why it was there but later in this video i can explain it because this lens is so small and light it's a lot easier to quickly take it off the tripod and shoot out this other side and i got a, um, a eastern bluebird i think the female in the top of the redbud tree that is over that way Handheld photograph of the eastern bluebird out the left hand side of the blind and shooting backwards. I love the fresh growth on the red bud tree there in the background. Pretty happy with this photo overall. One of the downy woodpeckers, and we think we have at least three that come to our feeders, but one of them landed on the railing and I was waiting for it to hop up on one of the perches, which is what they normally do. They'll land on the railing, go to the perch, and then go to the suet feeder, but it just stayed and I, I didn't take a picture of it. And then another one came down, I, I guess it was on the suet feeder, but I wasn't paying attention to it. And it came down and fed that bird some suet. So hopefully I got a shot of that. Now I know why the woodpecker had so much suet in its mouth in the previous picture that it wasn't eating. It was waiting around for its child to come by so it could feed it. And even though the bird on the left is a little out of focus, I still like this shot. It's the best one I got of this scene. And look how cute the chipmunk is on the log. This is a log I have attached to the porch. The top is hollowed out and I put bird seed in it and the chipmunk loves it. I've kind of changed my philosophy in terms of the squirrel. Actually, the squirrel that we call Rodney usually just eats the seeds that I put on the porch, but there's another squirrel that will, that will climb up and get to the feeder and uh, eat all the suet and the regular feeders it damages. I've had to replace two bird feeders recently. Heather got me a, a really nice all metal bird feeder and um, I just don't want the squirrels to get to that so I did all sorts of, of uh, designs. I used an old, an old cone of shame from our dog when it had an injury and I put it on the pole and the squirrel ate through the plastic on that so I bought an expensive metal cone that sits on the pole and keeps the um, keeps the squirrels from getting to my bird feeders. But I still put bird seed out on the rail when I'm out here and the squirrels can eat that, which is fine. But I don't want them tearing up my bird feeders. I don't mind feeding them. I just don't want them to break the bird feeders. The species of bird that I see most at my feeder stations is the house finch. And I don't know if this one is a female or a juvenile, but I thought its feathers poking up were kind of cute. And look at this, it's a European starling on something man-made, but I decided to share it anyway. I thought the photograph was pretty and I always think the starlings are pretty. I definitely could have used that extra 100 millimeters that I'm missing. There was a tufted titmouse, which is a very small bird and it landed in my background tree. 
I was able to get the shot, but it's tiny in the frame. The R7 with its 32 and a half megapixels is really great for bird photography because even though I cropped this picture quite a bit, there's still a lot of detail in the subject. I had a long time with no activity out here except for the squirrel and the chipmunk and maybe an occasional house finch. And then the downy woodpecker flew up and landed on my left perch, which I've had to lower, by the way, to keep the squirrel from jumping from it to get to the bird feeder that it destroys. And it was only there long enough to get three shots, but one of them I really like. The woodpecker's looking up, and you know it's looking up at the suet feeder up above, but you might not know if you're looking at it and don't know the whole story. It just looks pretty. I was really happy with this pose that the downy woodpecker gave me there on my left perch, just looking up at the suet feeder, but you don't know what it's looking at. It, you just know it looks cool. And oh no, I did it again. It's another picture of a European starling on a man-made wrought iron bird feeder holder. Finally got a shot of the Carolina wren. It's been flying around here all morning. I've heard it calling from the distance and it's Two or three times it's come up on the porch, but not in an area where I could get a shot of it. But finally it landed on my left perch, which is my favorite perch. And it is the one with the damaged left foot. So it's still doing okay. Here's the Carolina Wren photo, and it is the one with damage to its left foot. I don't know if you've seen my other videos, but I have several photographs of this bird, and it seems to be doing well. And I've decided to nickname him Lefty because of the damage to his left foot. The Northern Cardinal came and landed in the Leland Cypress, which is my background tree. And I got a shot, at least one shot of it that's pretty cool and maybe two. The Northern Cardinal is a pretty good bit bigger than a tufted titmouse and he was closer in the tree than the titmouse was. So I didn't have to crop this one nearly as much as that one. Look at that fluffy bird. Just as I was saying that the Cardinal rarely lands on the porch unless it's actually on the feeder where I don't want to take the shot. It came up and landed on one of my perches, and instead of having to use 400 millimeters in f8, I got to use 225 in f7.1. I wish this cardinal had its tuft poking up instead of laid back flat, but otherwise I like this introspective looking pose it's given me there on one of my perches. The brown thrasher landed in the background tree, and I was able to get a 400 millimeter shot. Of the three birds that I photographed on my background tree today, this one is the largest and it was the closest to me, so I didn't have to crop this one nearly as much as the others. Well, the 100 to 400, while nowhere near as good as the 100 to 500, is pretty darn good, especially for the price. I mean, this thing is just ridiculously cheap. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're having trouble stomaching the budget for a 100 to 500, or maybe you need to save up, Pick up one of these in the meantime, and it'll get you going, especially if you have an R7 with that 1.6 crop and the high resolution. It's a really good birding lens. All right, that's going to do it for me this morning. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the content, I can't get my thumb in the frame. There we go. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, and all that good stuff. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.